A lot of people think they should try and be good and avoid sin, but what if sinning was the way to salvation? That's essentially what an early sect of heretical Christians called the Cainites believed. But could this actually be true? The Cainites purportedly held in high regard and venerated those who are normally considered the villains of the Bible, like Judas the betrayer and Cain the first murderer. In fact, they're called Cainites because of their veneration for Cain. I know it all sounds backwards, but the Cainites would say that it's the rest of the world and mainstream Christianity that has it backwards. That everything that you've been taught is wrong, that you've been lied to and brainwashed. That life isn't about being moral, submissive, and what most people would define as good, but rather about unlocking secret knowledge and exploring everything that life has to offer, including shadow, sin, and darkness. Now, I know it sounds crazy and hard to believe, but what if the Cainites were right? And the truth is that they came close to unlocking a great secret. And part of this secret has to do with God actually being the devil. If you're new here, my name is Morg, and hey, my goal, it's about bringing the truth of existence to the world, and you can become a part of history by helping us spread this information, by subscribing now, it gets this out here. And my content, it is controversial, so make sure that you hit the bell so that we can beat the algorithm and you'll be notified whenever something new comes out. Around the year 180, an early church father named Saint Irenaeus, the Bishop of Lyon, wrote a book with the intention of exposing what he considered to be heresy and blasphemy. In his book, Adversus Heresis, or Against Heresies, he describes a heretical Christian group called the Cainites as taking part in the most blasphemous and sinful activities imaginable. He describes their fascination with Cain and other so-called villains of the Bible. He claims they're obsessed with hidden knowledge and even mentions that they have a secret gospel of Judas the betrayer. And I'll be making a video about the gospel of Judas soon, by the way. Saint Irenaeus said, The Cainites declare that Cain derived his being from the power above. They declare that Judas the traitor was thoroughly acquainted with these things and that he alone, knowing the truth as no others did, accomplished the mystery of the betrayal. An angel, they maintain, attends them in every one of their sinful and abominable actions. They rush into such actions as it is not lawful even to name. Well, those are some big accusations. So the question is, why were the Cainites so obsessed with what Irenaeus considered sin, lawlessness, debauchery, and villains? What was their secret knowledge? And most importantly, could they be right? To understand the Cainites, you have to realize that in the early stages of the development of Christianity, it wasn't at all what Christianity actually was. It was just beginning. And Orthodox Christianity? It wasn't defined yet. And so there were many different Christian sects that had wildly different beliefs that were often at odds with each other. So one of the biggest areas of disagreement was, why was the God of the Old Testament so different from Jesus? The God of the Old Testament, also known as Yahweh, that's the God that created the physical world. He created Adam and Eve and all the other stories that you've heard about, like Noah's Ark. But this God, it's nothing at all like Jesus. He's wrathful, jealous, vengeful. He drowns the entire world. He accepts burnt virgin sacrifices, kills countless innocent people and children throughout the Old Testament. And I don't have time to get into all the violent atrocities that this God commits or this video would be hours long, but suffice to say, he's nothing at all like Jesus. The Old Testament God, Yahweh, says an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, a broken bone for broken bone. But Jesus Christ directly contradicts this and says the opposite. Jesus said, you have heard that it was said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. So one of the big questions for the developing religion of Christianity was, why is Jesus Christ so different, almost the opposite of the God Yahweh, the supposed creator of the world? Well, 
orthodox Christianity, mainstream Christianity today, attempts to answer this dramatic inconsistency by saying that since Jesus died on the cross, the old laws, they no longer apply. Well, if that doesn't make much sense to you, you're not alone. In fact, it didn't make sense to many of the early Christians, like the Valentinians, the Marcians, and the Gnostics. According to Valentinian Christianity, the God of the Bible, Yahweh, isn't the one true God, but a lesser God that rules over the world of matter. Nonetheless, he's still a good God. Now, according to Marcion Christianity, not only is the God of the Bible a lesser God, but is actually an evil God, and the material world is a place of suffering. According to Marcionism, Christ is a being from the true divine reality sent to help humanity escape from the trap of the material world created by the evil creator god. Now, Sethian Gnostic Christians, they agreed with the Marcians that the god of the Bible, Yahweh, was a lesser god and an evil being, the devil. They believed that humanity was divine and the evil satanic creator god trapped souls into matter to power his infernal creation. Even death wasn't an escape since the Sethian Christians believed in reincarnation. The only way to liberation was through understanding secret knowledge, which was that humanity is actually divine. And so Jesus, to them, was a messenger from the divine realities here to help humans look within, uncover that secret knowledge, and remember what they truly are. But what about the Cainites? That's who we're interested in. They agreed with the Sethians that the God of the Bible was a lesser evil God. But the Cainites had secret knowledge of their own to add, which led to what St. Irenaeus would call unspeakable lawlessness. They had their own method for escaping reincarnation and achieving divine transcendence. So, what was their secret knowledge? And why were they named after Cain, the first murderer? According to the Bible, Cain and Abel were brothers, the sons of Adam and Eve. Cain was a farmer and Abel was a shepherd. Both of the brothers made sacrifices to the God of the Bible. Since Cain was a farmer, he gave the fruits and vegetables that he grew to God. And since Abel was a shepherd, he sacrificed sheep to God. Well, God accepted Abel and his animal sacrifice, but rejected Cain and the vegetables and produce that he offered. Now, doesn't that seem weird? Why would he accept Abel's bloody animal sacrifice and reject Cain's produce, the fruits and the vegetables, the peaceful hard work of a farmer? The God of the Bible is obsessed with animal sacrifice. He accepts a human burnt virgin sacrifice, drowns all of humanity in a flood except for Noah and his family and he has the firstborn children of Egypt killed, just to name a few things. The Cainites concluded that this so-called God was clearly evil and so venerated Cain the farmer rather than his brother, the animal sacrificing Abel. According to Bishop Epiphanius, the Cainites believed that the evil God of the Bible wanted to destroy Cain and themselves, the Cainites, but couldn't because they were under the protection of a power higher than the God of the Bible, a power called Sophia, or wisdom. Since the Cainites concluded that the so-called God of the material world was evil, a devil, and trapping souls here on earth, the question became, well, how could they escape? Many people believe that getting access to a pleasant afterlife has something to do with being a good person, not the Cainites. Could the opposite be true? Could it actually have something to do with being as sinful as possible? If God was actually the devil, wouldn't it make sense that this evil being's laws and commandments would be put in place to keep souls trapped in the cycle of reincarnating and remaining its slave? After all, in his book written to expose heretics, Bishop Epiphanius said this about the Cainites. Each of them is doing some unspeakable thing, performing obscenities and committing every sin there is. And this is what they call perfect knowledge. So how do we make sense of all this? According to St. Irenaeus, the Cainites and Carpocrates had similar views on how to escape the cycle of reincarnation. 
They believed that an imprisoned soul had to pass through every kind of experience across lifetimes, and eventually, having all different kinds of earthly experience, well, the soul would no longer be pulled to earth, and so it could transcend to the true realm. The soul would no longer desire to incarnate because it experienced everything that it could. Carpocrates taught that it was possible to condense all these experiences into one lifetime so that they wouldn't need to incarnate multiple times. Saint Irenaeus said this about the followers of Carpocrates' teachings. So unbridled is their madness that they declare they have in their power all things which are irreligious and impious. They deem it necessary, therefore, that by means of reincarnation from body to body, souls should have experience of every kind of life as well as every kind of action, doing all those things which we dare not either speak or hear of, nay, which we must not even conceive in our thoughts. So why were the followers of Carpocrates and the Cainites so vile, wretched, and sinful, according to the Church Fathers? Because it was their mission to experience everything that earthly life had to offer in order to escape reincarnation and transcend the physical world. Since they believed God was the devil, they weren't bound by his commands or laws. So were the Cainites actually going out of their way to break all the commandments on purpose? Well, we can't say for sure, but it's more likely that they were trying to experience all things and simply didn't care whether what they wanted to experience was considered sinful or not. But the big question here is could the Cainites actually be right? Think about it. Now, their view is the opposite of Buddhism. Buddhism more or less teaches that to escape incarnation, you should detach and extinguish desire here on earth. The Cainites would have thought that Buddhism was backwards. For the Cainites, the way to escape was through indulging and experiencing while on earth. The Cainites would say that you need to experience the physical and get it out of your system, so to speak, so that you would no longer desire to incarnate. The soul wouldn't want to come back because it did everything. So to understand this better, let's use a metaphor. Imagine that the desire to incarnate was like the desire to eat food. Buddhism would teach to abstain from food or to eat the bare minimum to try and extinguish the desire to eat. Whereas the Cainites would have taught, more or less, that you have to eat as much as possible until the very thought of food makes you sick. Have you ever been to an all-you-can-eat buffet and you ate so much that you felt really ill? You definitely don't have a desire to eat after that. So if the desire to incarnate was like the desire to eat food, when the Cainites died, they didn't want to be like the starving person. They wanted to be like the person that just got done gorging at a buffet. The Cainites wanted to experience everything so that when they died, they'd no longer have a desire to incarnate. Could they be right? I mean, it does seem to make sense. The Cainites actually came surprisingly close to the truth of existence. The truth is, incarnating into physical reality isn't necessarily about experiencing everything like the Cainites thought, but rather it's about learning, understanding, growth, and evolution. We yearn for answers to what we are, where we are, and why we're here. Each one of us is actually an eternal soul which is an evolving mathematical being of pure frequency, and we're incarnating through bodies in the physical domain, and this is what allows us to experience, learn, and evolve. Now, another thing that we can learn from the Cainites is that we shouldn't repress aspects of who we are just because society says that it's evil. The Swiss psychiatrist Carl Jung describes what's known as the shadow self. Your shadow self is composed of all the parts of you that you denied, cut off, and repressed into your unconscious because society told you that it was wrong. Carl Jung said, everyone carries a shadow, and the less it is embodied in the individual's conscious life, the blacker and denser it is. In other words, the more that you deny your shadow, these dark aspects of yourself, the more that they will control your life without you even knowing it. So you got to acknowledge them so that you can deal with them. Furthermore, your shadow self can actually contain powerful positive qualities like wild creativity and independence. Why? 
Well, because society brainwashes people into believing that conformity and herd mentality is good, while individuality and creativity is weird, strange, and unacceptable. Ultimately, we need to realize that life isn't about serving a god in the sky or doing good deeds to get into heaven. But it's not just about experiencing everything like the Cainites thought either. It's about growing, evolving, becoming the best, most expressed and vibrant versions of ourselves that we can possibly be. And this involves acknowledging our darkness, our shadow selves, so that we can deal with it in a healthy manner. Now, of course, life isn't just about our personal evolution, but the evolution of others as well, the collective, and ultimately the universe itself. So we should never harm others or do anything to irrationally impede their progress. We want to be our best, and we want others to have the freedom to be their best. I go into a lot of detail in how we can know all of this in my other videos on my channel. So, what do you think? Does the view of the Cainites or the view of mainstream Christianity make more sense? And what do you believe about existence? Why do you think we're here? Tell me in the comments right now. And what about their secret gospel of Judas the Betrayer? Well, I'll be making a video about that, so make sure that you are subscribed. And if you thought that this was interesting, check out my other video on how Adam and Eve reveal that God is actually the devil in a banned book from the Bible called The Apocalypse of Adam. Like, share, subscribe, and a big shout out to all my supporters on Patreon that are helping create a new world. Consider supporting on Patreon and you'll get access to our weekly secret live streams. My name is Morg and 